Um, good evening and welcome to the August 15th, 2023 uh, planning board meeting for the town of Ossining. Um I'm going to start by taking attendance. Uh, Christy, could you start, please? Christy, without an attorney. Valerie Menasha, uh, planning board consultant. Nancy Orsi, a consulting engineer's planning board. Sammy Anelli, secretary of the planning board. Don Sharp, planning board member. Jason Mencher, planning board member. Manny Wickes, planning board member. Carolyn Stevens, planning board chair. Um, okay, our... Um, First item this evening is the uh, Garth Vargas residence, 13 Devana Road. Good evening. Could you please give your name and address for the room? I'm Philip Cherodini. I'm the architect for uh, 13 Devana Road. And um, I have our consulting engineer, Brian, here tonight, as well as the uh, owners. Bill and uh, Condi. And uh, what we're proposing is to, ex to expand, can I take the second? Yes. <laughs> to expand an existing cabana. This, this is the property, 133 Cabana Road. It's 4.4 acres. And uh, is there, there were Structures on it already, they brought in all the apartments, basically. It uh, was here for years with a garage, storage uh, barn, and a cabana with a pool, which is all there along with the driveway and paved areas, and a, and a pond on the western part of the property that's uh, existed. And what we're proposing is to expand the cabana with a open air outdoor barbecue pavilion kind of thing, outdoor kitchen. And that would be in this area. This is a photograph of the existing cabana and the deck. There's an existing deck with a couple of trees on the left side of the cabana. And then it's an open field and uh, uh, that goes downhill to the pond. The addition would be to the left side here of this cabana. So from here to here is the existing cabana. You can see the, the arched windows here. And then from here over is the uh, outdoor kitchen with a uh, fireplace. And uh, we had a portico on the front of it. Just an overhang, it's a, you know, a weather item in front of the entry door and a cupola for light on top. And the, uh, the floor plan, this is the base cabana, the existing pool with hot tub. And I'm gonna bump the back out a little bit of the uh, cabana. And then from here over is the, the outdoor kitchen with uh, the barbecue areas, pizza oven, grill, et cetera. Fireplace with some more storage bins. A uh, built-in bar, sort of a concrete countertop with the seating. And a uh, dining area. And an open air seating area. And, and that, uh, that's basically the project. And I think we submitted um, with this drainage calculations and uh, what we would need in terms of call text and things to uh, to make this all work. And I, I think I've included in the package uh, to you uh, some photographs of a similar um, outboard mission that I did in Dover and Purchase uh, last year sometime. Just to give you a flavor of what, you know, what we're looking for. But, uh... Total square footage of the cabana, existing cabana, plus the enlargement. 2,200 square feet. 2,200. Is which the enlargement of the both? Well, the, the combined. And how much is this? That's right. Yeah. How much is this? Existing is uh, just under 500 feet, about 485. So it's 485 going to what? 
2200. 2200. So how much, how big is the existing house? The main house? Yeah, the main house. Oh, it's about, what, about 6,000 feet? 8,000. 8,000. It's a three-story farmhouse. It's, it's rather large. Does this qualify as an accessory? Is this, is this considered an accessory? I mean, I think uh, the building inspector didn't uh, identify it as an accessory. I mean, but with a kitchen. So you mean an accessory it's... use? Uh, accessory structure. Expansion structure. Of a single family home. Right. I, mean, I wouldn't, that's not how I would read it. It might be a type of action, but is it is it an expansion of a single family home? So, I mean, the, I mean, in terms of the seeker, I mean, you could put it as in that there is another type too, which is uh, uh, in the, uh, I think I don't have it, the language at the top of my head, but it's like uh, accessories to a single family home. So either way, it falls under the type two category. Um, so it just depends on how you want to construct sure. that. But I think in terms of the actual accessory structure, um, I don't know where, Sandy, do you know where John opined on that one way or the other? Well, we had our meeting here, the preliminary meeting. Right. Uh, well, it was fine. Uh, we didn't think I needed the variance. No. No, but it's it's still, you have a primary residence. Right. And this is really an accessory structure. So it may be fine to do, but we just have to, I guess, speak yeah. to the building inspector about the setbacks and... <laughs> Right, how so, that factors right. into our zoning code. Right, so he so did, that analysis should be on your your plan. I, I think I it's all been submitted. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. So the okay. the plans the plans that were submitted, a lot of them came in later because they originally submitted some of the plans that you probably saw without the zoning table, but then subsequent stuff was submitted uh, because not all of the plans were submitted electronically in the beginning. So. so we have to probably review that, um, but I do know that John Turncross was at a meeting with the applicant, and I know he opined, I, I don't know exactly which way he opined in terms of the accessory structure. So it's a, it's 2200, it's still within one third of the primary house, so it's it's still, it's still be okay, it, it is an accessory. Sheet C100 does include um, the zoning table, um, on the plans that were submitted, and it does treat this as uh, an accessory structure for the purposes of the old requirements. Okay. And there's no variance in the data. Did we check? The, did we verify the conformity to the zoning requirements? No, no, not. I mean, okay, so the next, well, yeah, yeah, next time because all this came in at yeah. the last minute, yeah. and nice. so I didn't. And did you take a look at it? That. Yeah, no, I just saw the, right. the latest electronic solution. So it's near the prop. Okay. Yes. Okay. So How tall is the the um oh, is that a little... not that guy? Sorry, that yes, this guy. Um like what's the current height of the structure and then what's the what's height the, of this? Yeah. Oh, this is very much that's well, the but this is four feet above it plus plus the roof. So you're probably looking at six feet of the And what's the present height? I'm sorry. What? What's the present height? I'm sorry. The, the, the existing bridge is yeah. here. So okay. Do you know what that is? The height above the bridge, give any idea. It's about 14, 14 feet. Okay. Could you tell me where um you consider this the rear yard where, where you're closest to with that addition? Yeah, this, this, because of the way the house is oriented in the road, this, I'm calling this the rear yard. Okay, so it meets the setback because it looks like it's pretty yeah, close. Yeah, it, it's close, but it meets the setback. It's then, uh, and so it's required, we have a weapon. And there is a slight reduction from 15 to 11 over what's existing. But, but based upon what's in their chart, they would still right, right. The fireplace is a gas wood. I know we're sitting as the ARB, so this is a site plan, and I know it's a type two, so environmental impact analysis is light. But how do you know? Have any idea how close that is to the nearest residence? 
Only well, because, like, right, we're adding a chimney, which is going to burn wood, which is going right. to put out some sort of smoke and smell. It's which is fine, right? But there's one up the hill here that's probably about, I don't know, 300 feet away. There is this one down in the corner, which is about 250. And then there's there's ones around here that that's yeah they're they're over two hundred. Jason, on the location map, you can see the little houses. Yeah, I know, but I I don't I don't know that I can measure. There's, there's well, there's, this, this, this is this is more like a isolated family compound than a, than a street scale. Right, I've read that in the application. Yeah, there's no <laughs> there's nobody adjacent to it, you know, in this in this area that you would say it's nearby. You can see from the picture of the field uh, how, how open it is. That picture, and the, that, that picture is looking down this way. Is there a photo looking from the back of where the addition uh, is? It's, yeah, it's in the... It's in the... Okay. Looking up the hill at uh, where this guy's house. And there's a new one that just went in here. Is that, that new house last summer? Sixty-eight. Is that it? Sixty-eight right. summer right Yeah. That's why these these additional trees are here. Right. This is this is a little open spot here. We're planning on adding some pines in there and some screening. Okay. Within the wetland. Yeah. The the planting is this, yeah. this is the buffer. Ron is our expert. You can is it flat fine planting within the wetland buffer? Oh, good. Yeah. Under feet, right? Well, that's one of the wetland buckets planted. Okay. Um, so, do I we would, have I any other questions? Sure. That, um, I do remember how contentious it was for that 68 Summertown Road with the, with the screening. How the neighbors, I think, including this applicant, felt like it was highly inadequate. The plantings that they were doing. So I'm wondering if that's going to be now that they're adding, if that's going to be enough. So, the screen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. And also the fact that it's pines. And if I recall, the pines weren't doing very well on that property. So I because it's very it's because it's wet. Not, the pines are not a, a natural occurring thing. There's somebody that planted them and they're not doing very well. So I'm not uh, sure if, about that species choice is what I'm saying. If, if we have that out, maybe Brian can stick to that. Stick there. Because it's pretty wet though. And so we just had another house that was built there. So we went like it's a great detail. Yeah, in the corner of bed. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's where we did the screen. So yeah. the question is great detail. Do we add more pines yeah. or yeah. change the species and go yeah. to different uh, well, I would see what you would think about yeah. that based, yeah. on the, like, based on the soil conditions there. Sure, okay. We were matching. We're trying to keep that tree line consistent. Yeah, okay. so a little. Uh, I haven't been there for a while now, but it, yeah, there's it some might not be the up, up on this property line. Yes, okay. they were planted at some point. Right, they were planted. They, when I was out there, they seemed to be doing well. That's why we kept it consistent. Um, okay. But we could look at other. Uh, what kind trees. of pines? White pine. White. white. Problem with white pines, oh, well, they grow very fast, but but then they wind up leaving a large. They grow very fast, and they and they they wind up leaving about ten feet or so of space from where the branches are to to the ground. Um, in in kind of contemplating that, you know, we're sitting higher up. You know, okay. So it, it wasn't. No, it wasn't like a straight horizontal shot in the okay. picture. Okay. There's still going to be an angle that was screened. So even yeah, if you want to see under probably the down 20, 25. Right. Okay. So okay. we're looking All right. down there, looking okay. up. All right. Would, okay. Would, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So just if you, if, if you feel that, that, if you have a justification for that choice other than just matching what's there, but this, you know, then yeah, I'd like, like to do that. Uh, do you want to talk to us about materials or anything at this point, or do you want to? Well, the it's actually pretty simple because of what we have already. Okay. We're just gonna we're gonna match the stonework. Okay. We're gonna match the roofing. Mm -hmm. And any we're gonna put a new door in which will match the the white trim, and uh, it, included in the uh, the package that I gave you is uh, there's lighting. It's on an existing uh, 
Sarai. Let's see. Is he on his phone? Is he? Yeah. 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 I saw the package. He was in the picture. Yeah, I think it's in the. So she I had to print it out. Okay. I, this is another. <laughs> we just finished this for Jill and John. It's a it's a garage with a. Um, and above it that we just uh, renovated. This is on the same property. Yeah, yeah, this is this is one of the accessory structures. If you could point out where the lights are and we're basically matching the oh. stonework. This is, no, this is not this is just an example, example. Of, yeah. gotcha. of another one that I did. Yeah. So we're matching the stonework and the lighting on that existing um, garage. So that everything was tied together. Right. Did this one find right RV or was it just like change? No, it's too small. Okay. Could you show me where the lights are going to be? On these posts. Okay. Now so all facing in towards the back. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. not facing towards the pond. No. Okay. So we have yeah, a we'll, we'll we standardly ask to use a very low um Body. oven for the the low, the sharp cut off. Yeah, not the high so bright light. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. yeah and ideally, right. they wouldn't keep the on all night. That would be right. They wouldn't be on. All night. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. And the stove will be gas. Well, the the, the, the barbecue grill. Um, is it going? You said it's kitchen, so I'm, is it going to be stove and? Well, it's a, it's an and grill. It's a barbecue. I, it's just going to be a grill. Okay. But it's a barbecue. Okay, it's a barbecue. So it's a, it's a, there's a barbecue grill, a pizza oven, and uh, there'll be a flat grill. Okay. And their oh. fuel will be what? Propane. Propane. Okay. But I just have one comment about the the EAS that was filled out. Um. I, so just on um, on number thirteen, when it when it talks about the wetland or water body, it would be great if it was identified by watershed, which I believe is the same thing. So that same thing. Yeah, sorry. I think the, the on number thirteen on the EAF. Yeah. Where it talks about the wetland. It talks about the wetland. Yeah. It says if yes, identify the wetland or water body. So it'd just be good to just say it's the same that and kill. Watershed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just so there's an understanding that it is a connected Just sorry. Do we have photos from the back of it looking towards the neighboring properties? And is that in the within the paper? I know you might not have them now. I meant yeah, in the, the planning board. Part of the planning board application does uh require photos. Uh, if so, if we don't have it this time, I want to relationship to neighboring properties yeah. and structures. Okay. If this was part of the discussion, yeah. you know, this gives you the orientation of yeah. each each photo and the direction. So let's see. Yes. This is across the street of the Rhino Road. This is a Rhino Road. Sure, yeah, that's a little close yeah. then. Sure, yeah. I mean, like, this, this is the one that was just added down. Mm -hmm. Down here, I guess it's 68. I'm, I'm just talking about if you're behind, I'm looking right. behind, closest to the property line, looking basically looking away from another way from, from the, be, so the that, back of yeah, the that, addition. That's, this is you know looking behind the, uh, well, but then the additions right is coming out, yeah, this right, point. right. So yeah. just next, to, if you can, can you snap some photos in the interim mm -hmm. or maybe the homeowners have a photo, yeah, or yeah, two? sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's part of one. And this, yeah, we can take uh, yeah, a picture right here. You can barely see the house, but we'll, uh, 
Okay. We'll show you what it is. Yes, it's funny. So I did have one last question. The landscaping is the first time that the yours. You. I just wanted to make sure this this information about the planting met our. We have a guide for the town of Austin town of the planting standards. So if it met that, and also if it's going to be deer fencing around those little streets, like how they'll be protected from deer, because there's a lot of deer in the water. Yeah. Sure. So we saw them when we were out yes. there for the other property. So yeah. So, um, so that they actually <laughs> last. Is there a standard for how long the deer fence has to be installed? I don't think there is, but um, but the the goal would be that the plants would live mature. Right. So so if there's any, if you can provide some details on how that would be. Uh, it's only a small yeah, I just want to make sure we're not yeah, yeah. steer boat through there. We want to make sure it's passes through that when you come there. That you no, just it seems to me like you would just be, it should be like a, it'd be like a little tree, a little tree, a little tree, a little cage, a little cage, a little cage so they get yeah. big enough so that you know, the deer won't destroy right. them. Right. Especially it's, since it's three trees together, if, if that's what you're proposing. Exactly, yes, yeah, together, and it's also, I mean, it's not. It was kind of an elective planting. Right. So it's not like it was required for mitigation. You know, okay. this is the only yeah, but... so well, I think we can ask for screening. You mean as, yeah. as the yeah. 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 yeah, I think the issue is that screening is for the other house, right? Sure. Less than right. the the addition of the proposal. We required the other house to have screening there as well. A lot of right. things. Yeah. So right. Um so we need to did we... Yes. They are doing screening in that area. And if you're adding to it, maybe you can coordinate as to what they're planting to plant additionally. I mean, right, all we have to go off of what is already there and continue that. But it seems to me that we need to discuss with the neighbor. I guess you can pull the plans. Yeah, for the yeah. planting. Yeah. You can pull the planting plan for for that property and you can see what the what it is that what we'll be putting in. It's available through the building department, or you can talk to them. The town also has um, Airbnb planning board landscaping that's connected to. It's definitely on their website that you can search for, and it has um, links to to prefer. I think she's looking for so the people that's it's right next to where they're planting just oh, went yeah. through right. with you and they brought a big, very extensive planting plan. So right. they're asking like, if, it, if it's something they should coordinate with them or yeah, maybe they can do a complimentary planting. Right, right. That'd be great. Whatever yeah. they're doing. That'd be yeah. Great. But they would they could look at like the challenge or they could look. You the can plant. pull the planting. Yeah, it's sure. pretty easy to do. I mean, was on that either. I don't know. I have. Is, is that information in the building department? Can yeah. I get that file there? Yep. Okay. It's also available online too. Yeah. The, they're they're planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. There's, so there's an approved um project. All right. So uh, we need to set a public hearing. A public hearing. Um. So our next our next meeting date is September. Twentieth, based on the other items that you got that didn't make it in the memo, is it a complete application? So, I mean, based I on I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a chance to dive deeply into what they submitted, but they definitely submitted most of the additional information. Um, so, so like the application, the zoning table, the site plan, photos, materials. Um, they did have relationship to neighboring properties, proposed landscaping. So um, those were all the, I mean, those were most of the items. And if there's anything remaining that we'll note that for next month's memo. But I'm saying if we set it, I guess we can just keep a public hearing open. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can just keep it open. Not going to open and close it. No. Okay. So, um, okay. So, um, I'll make the motion. What's the date, sir? September 20th. I'll make a motion to set a public hearing for 13 Toronto Road for September 20th. 
Okay. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Uh, Donna, how do you vote? Yes. Um, Jason, how yes. do you vote? Annie? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Good. We have a public hearing for September 20th. We'll Thank see you then. Thank you. And um, we'll make sure that everything is complete by then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Well, I mean, I think the real issue, I mean, we're, people, I mean, Dan and I, we got, so I got the stuff this week. Yeah. So I didn't have a, ch I haven't even looked at the zoning table. So, so you'll, you'll, right. So you were asking whether it was right. like, you know, I, I, I couldn't remember off the top of my head whether the, how the building inspector went. But if they submitted it for as an accessory structure in the zoning table, then that's not going to be waived. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't generally draft denial letters unless, you know, it has to go to the zoning. Mm -hmm. So the setback is going to be agree, right? Yeah. yeah. Which I does the use of that, does the accessory building use matter for that setback? Or is that a blanket setback? It's for, so it's any, it's for an accessory structure. And so then, and then the code delineates obviously what those permitted accessory structures are. How big, what is the percentage of an accessory structure? You were one third, right. one, one third of the main house. Okay. So, so but, but they have, so they have other accessory buildings on the property. Does that, does that to, how does that impact it? I don't know. We have to take a look at that. And you have multiple because they have a separate garage and they, and they have separate storage. Oh, then. Oh, you mean you break you up the one third? One, more than one principal structure. I think mm -hmm. you know you probably have a, like a garage and a pool would both be considered accessory structures. Well, they just, you just said they did a bunch of work on this. This looks pretty big, and I yeah. don't think this ever came before us. So I guess no. He said it was small enough so it didn't have to come in front. Of us. That's just pretty tasty. Oh, so they just did rental. Well, so okay. Okay. To the house. Well, but still, I mean, how many? I mean, in theory, if, if we're talking about a, an accessory building that's a, that could be up to a third, if you have three of them, does it? I what mean, does I that say cumulatively? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, do we need? I guess one of the things we might want to ask them for is the size of the other two accessory buildings that they have. How they, how they compare when you calculate them right. together. Yeah. And the pool, I mean, he didn't give us the pool as well. He just gave us the cabana. Right. So right. Yeah, no, the we, have to, separate... we, have to take, we have to take a look at it for okay. zoning compliance for sure. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Um, all right. Our next item. Um, River Knoll, 40 Croton Dam Road. Um, so I provided, um, the applicant provided uh, revisions of the supplemental final environmental impact statement. Uh, Dan and I both provided memo on the completion of those revisions at this point. And so um, we feel that I feel that the additional information that was submitted um, actually uh, dealt with and responded to many of the comments. And then there's just a few remaining comments that I feel that need to be taken care of during site plan and can be enumerated in the finding statement, specifically noting that during site plan review, those elements would be taken care of. Um, so I, I'm happy to add, answer any questions that the board has on the stuff that I identified. If you want me to identify very specifically which ones were recommended from the finding statement, I can do that as well. It's not really up to you. Okay. Um, I know Donna, you said you had yeah. you had one. I thought it was one question. <laughs> Well, about lands, something about the yeah the mowing and the landscaping. Yeah, so I just feel like on the on the, this is a document that's going to the town board, and they're going to make a decision based on that. Is that what it is? So the town board is ultimately the next step. Is after after this board adopts a finding statement, then the town board also has to adopt the same finding statement because they're an involved agency where they can write a finding statement of their own. And then, then you start the site plan approval process as well as the, the town board needs to do public hearings for the adoption of the zoning change. 
Right. So would they be what they're looking at our findings and looking at all these site plans and all of this? Right? Yes. And then there'll be updated site plans as well. Okay. So awesome. my problem is, is when I look at it, um, and we've looked at it a long time. It's not clear that this site plan for the landscaping is only an illustration of, you know, a concept. It's, um, it looks like it's a landscaping site plan. And that, I think we all agreed, was going to be something that's going to be handled in the site, in the site plan process. Well, that's, so I mean, that's why to this to rename it. Well, I just think it would be clear if it just, if it say, stated something like this, this is a like an, for illustrative purposes only, and it's conceptual, or is it? Right. Yeah, conceptual. That will be, it's conceptual. It yeah. will be all the species and exact placement will be handled during site plan. I think that would be on. That should be on, and I also feel um, it should be clear that the I know I know it did state in here somewhere that they were going to take they were going to remove the invasive species. I think that should be on the, the landscaping site plan. Um, I can't hear you. Sorry. So the invasive species, I think that should be noted on the landscaping site plan that that's going to be removed, that it's going to be removed as part of the landscaping plan. So we what what the removal of invasive species? No, but where where do you want it noted on the conceptual? On the, the the conceptual landscape. Yeah. Okay. But where the recommendations of one can just it's say in here, but it's like, updated it's landscaping like, plan, right? right? It's site plan right. that includes recommended landscaping standards, comma, right. well, that, removal of invasive discussion of invasive species removal, comma, and further details on tree preservation, right? Is, that yeah, achieves right. the same thing. Yeah. And then I just want to be clear is um, there's a lot of stuff that was not provided. You know, a lot of the things we've been asking for a lot. Um, like the staging area question. Yeah. All that. So what? So you're saying he answered most of the questions, but there's a lot of stuff like the about the bus stop thing. That was so that was, right. So that's, that's added in that, the for the next round. That will be for the site plan. Okay. Right. Right. That's part of the finding statement. I have that. Right. Uh, but it hasn't been provided yet. So we're no. Saying, no. Okay. No, these are the remaining comments that have not theoretically been addressed. Uh -huh. But if you recall, we had there were a number of comments, and now we're down to about, you know, and that's 10 or not, so. In my experience, and, Valerie has you know, right. a lot more. That's not atypical. Sometimes things can be carried to site plan, typically, often right. they are. Well, right in your yeah particularly this like things like staging and the blasting and stuff we still don't know really it's, what's going to be you required know, you need a yeah. site plan to do anything so right. it's not completing the seeker process doesn't you know open the door to start tearing things down and building and, a lot and more. the fact that those things will need to continue to be addressed at site plan will be explicitly stated in the findings exactly. right right yeah. but this is a it's a it's environmental review that we're doing the findings right? yes Yes. Right. So my problem is that there's several of the environmental issues that I've been concerned about are, are not addressed. Yet. So um or they're they're answered in a way that I just don't find satisfactory. Like the without this whole front yard being the lawn. And and I I do see that they're saying uh, that the applicant's saying that the basin has to be mowed twice yearly. But with the with the, the grasses that they're proposing to plant if it's twice yearly it's going to be i don't know if you saw any mill no, well, may one but i mean they get like this hot so it's it's i'm questioning if it is going to be twice yearly or if there could be a more reasonable grass species we can i think i think that valerie's point is we can address that and it's the site plan, it's plan. Okay. that we can it's the, what you're trying to evaluate uh, is are there ways to mitigate any potentially significant adverse impact to the point that you can issue a finding statement to move the project to the next step? And I think based on what you're saying, Donna, you may not have that information in front of you right now, but those, there are ways, there are mechanisms through, like we were saying, either more frequent mowing or a different type of species 
um, that will be fleshed out in much greater detail during the site plan stage okay. that would alleviate those concerns. And, and again, those are things that will be noted in the finding statement as requiring more detail. Okay, so even though this is responding that they're going to do it one way, we can still in the finding statements indicate that that is something that can be correct. Right. Okay, because right now it's not saying that, that it's going to be part of the site plan review. But which which comment are you referring to? Number um so it's your second page, number five. Right. So I have in there that it's recommended the finding came in notes that during site plan review, the applicant will provide a more detailed stormwater infiltration management and maintenance plan and an updated SWIP for review and approval. So at that point, when he, they up and submit of that, that, right. right. So our and then you can review that. it and then we'll say, I want, we want these changes. Right. Okay, so just keeping that, that probably also address, addresses this. The other thing, as, as we all know, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with the, the large glass window. Have you gone through a, a larger scale landscaping plan at the site plan, plan level? Oh, yeah. You have. Okay, and so this, that's what. Address the, but yeah. it was done during the secret view. Mm -hmm. all, uh, not a formal site, not a formal landscape plan. It's not done yet. Secret. No. Why, why don't we just let Donna go through her comments? Because it seems like that the approach. So I just want to make sure that also interest. my, if you could handle it, if it's going to be handled the same way, and perhaps it is, and I'm just not understanding. Yeah. I apologize, but also that the issue of the large glass windows being illuminated, um, yeah. if that is something that also can be. Um, right. Yeah. So I did know that. So I have in there, for example, like um, on page three or four, um, that I have it is recommended in the finding statement notes that during slate plan and ARB review, the applicant will provide more details on design, including potential mechanisms for the okay. bird strikes. Right. Okay, great. All right, I just want to be really clear before I'm voting on it. Right, know. and also just to note, like these are the remaining comments, and then I was I'm noting that that's going to be these recommendations, these requirements going to work to the finding statement. But in addition, when we write this finding statement, we're going to look at each one of the environmental topic areas and identify the mitigation measures that they've already noted as part of their site plan that this board has already reviewed or okay. So the, those also, like, for example, so affordable housing, like, you know, the, the number of the requirements of affordable housing units, that's going to go in there along with they have to meet, like, the town code, right. you know. So there's additional, this is just sort of like the remaining items that is, theoretically have I felt that haven't really been fully addressed yet, but could be addressed at the next round where the some of the other items that they had taken care of. Okay, and then Dan's comment here on his memo says, it's like uh, the landscaping plan for this area, this is about retaining walls, should be carefully evaluated to ensure the walls are screened. Right. So that means during site. So, yes. 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 Okay, correct. so that will be like yep. early in the final. Yes. Okay. Final. Findings. So basically, okay. we're saying that, that we asked for information and we provided it, and that's what we're voting on. And we're sort of well, the, the next the next step is to accepting. basically ha, um, accept the the uh, FEIS and then ask that a founding statement um, be right. or be drafted. Right. So the finding statement is basically going to identify, discuss the topic area, the, the impact, and then the mitigation measures that are being identified that are that this board is requiring to have to be incorporated in order to not have a significant adverse impact so on the projects. During the site plan review. Right. That. Exactly. Then, so that's where some of these elements that okay. have not been, the uh, mitigation measures haven't been finalized yet, but will be will be identified. They've at least been identified. Right. And, so, and, so basically noted. they'll be addressing the finding statement, will be addressing all the concerns we have yes. right, narratively. narratively. And then after and after that, then they'll once we approve that, then the site plan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Assume, assuming the the, the town board acts on it and right. sends it back to us. Right. And then that's where you'll get into the details of, right. you know, yes, we, we have a general sense of how tall the retaining walls are going to be, but you'll deal with the, you know, the overall structure of them and the aesthetics and, you know, and then where the landscaping will go with the retaining walls that those are the kinds of details that you'll be dealing with during site plan. Okay. 
the the findings also um, establishes like more or less thresholds. So if for some reason the applicant came back and said, oh, the, the retaining walls are no longer going to be 10 feet tall, they're now going to be 50 feet tall. Okay, well now that becomes an additional Fish. impact that they have right. to look at, okay. right? So it kind of sets the bar as to these are the impacts that we looked at, these are the, you know, yeah. and then and then everything else needs to fall underneath those thresholds. Thank okay. you. All right. So um, may I have a Motion to approve the FEIS. Yes, accept the FEIS. Accept the and I'll make the motion to accept the SFEIS as complete. Okay. For the River Knoll project. Okay. I'll, I'll second that. Um, can we oh, say yes. as complete uh, pending the so, pending. one item for revising the concept, uh, landscape plan to note that it's conceptual? I'll make the motion to accept the SFEIS for River Knoll as complete, pending the one comment that was raised by Planning Board Member Sharrett regarding landscaping. Um, do I have regarding, a regarding uh, inclusion? Recharacterizing re the yeah. landscaping plan as yes. sexual. And that the at site plan, the landscaping plan will identify procedures to remove invasive species. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Well, minus I'll second that. Okay. Donna, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. Uh, Jason, how do you vote? I vote yes. Manny? I vote yes. I vote yes as well. And then uh, you'll want to direct, you know, the development of the finding statement. Yes. I'll so, make a motion to direct the drafting of the finding statement for the River River Knoll project. Um, I'll second that. Okay. Um, Anna, how do you vote? Yes. Jason? Yes. Manny? Yes. I vote yes as well. Okay. Really want some cake. <laughs> <laughs> I bake sure. cake. Yes. You, you bake it? Okay. Well, I guess we have, have some cake. <laughs> really not. Well, you should have made that statement after. I do the for my kids for the birthday food, so I'm really good at it. <laughs> Uh, Can we finish the meeting? Yes. Yeah, so right. Let me. Let, we we have one more thing to do. We have uh, minutes. Okay. We have minutes. Um. At the same time. Do we have um? Uh. All right. Oh, we have a motion on the minutes. Oh, that's too cute. Okay. Well, why don't we get the Thank you. Uh, can I have a second? Okay. Um, Let me guess what the eight is. Eight years. Make a um, motion to yes. Okay. Yes. How do, you do, how do you vote on the minutes? Yes. Yes. Donna, yes. I vote yes as well. The minutes are accepted. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Um, yes. Yeah. Donna votes yes. Jason? Yes. Manny? Yes. I vote yes as well. Thank Meeting you. adjourned. <laughs> we don't need a motion. Oh, okay. Who's going to blow? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's that?